Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of the data series. In the previous episode we have taken a look at some of the theory of hierarchical clustering and now it's time to implement it in Python. So the first thing we need to do is to import our data into Python and we're going to be using the same data set as we did with k-means clustering which is the iris data. So here I've imported the pandas library and read the iris data into the variable iris underscore data and then use the function iris underscore data dot head to display the first few rows. So in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at three properties of our flower, the sepal length, the petal length, and the petal width. So here I've stored these three columns under the variable x, and then did x.shape to display the number of rows and number of columns. So here we have 150 observations of flowers and three columns. We can see the different species of plants we're working with by using the following code. And as before, we're working with the same species, Iris Satosa, Iris Versicolor, and Iris Virginica. So the next thing I'm going to do is to produce a 3D plot showing the sepal length, petal length and petal width of each of our flowers and then color code them according to their species. I've imported the matplot library and also the axis 3D object which will enable us to make a 3D plot and also the patches submodule which will help us with some of the color coding. So first we set our variables. So in this case we're setting x to be our sepal length, y to be our petal length and z to be our petal width. We then create an instance of our axes, which gives us a canvas to plot on, and we set the size to be five by five. We're then gonna create a dictionary to map each of our species to a different color. So in this case, we're setting all iris satosas to orange, iris versicolors to gray, and iris virginicas to light blue for our plot. And we're using the color dictionary, which we defined earlier, to map each of our species to a color. So we're setting it to a sort of dot type and we're setting alpha equal to one, which gives the transparency of each of our data points. So next we're gonna add a legend. And for that, we're gonna be utilizing our patches submodule, which we imported earlier. So we're creating a orange patch, a gray patch and a light blue patch on our legend, just to show which iris type corresponds to which color. And we'll then add a title and some labels. So if you run this now, we can see here our 3D plot with each of our species color coded. So we'll now go on to implement hierarchical clustering on our data set. And for that, I've imported the agglomerative clustering function from the scikit-learn library. So first we need to define a few properties. So we'll set the number of clusters equal to three and we'll set the linkage method equal to ward, which we discussed in the previous episode. We'll then define this instance under the variable hc. We'll then fit our agglomerative clustering algorithm to our data by using following code and we'll then display the clusters each data point belongs to. So in this case, we set the number of clusters equal to three. So when we produce our dendrogram, our algorithm is already making the cut where the hierarchical clustering algorithm has produced three clusters. So if you run this, so we can see here all the predicted clusters for each of our data points. So looking back at our 3D plot, we could probably say that these points here most likely refer to cluster one, since there aren't really many points near it and so our algorithm is able to classify all of them quite easily into cluster one without any confusion we can see here that for these data points there are some points being put into cluster zero and some into cluster two so we'll now make another 3d plot but instead of color coding according to the different species we'll color code according to our different clusters so for that i've simply just changed the color to equal the hc.labels which we defined here, which gave us this output of the different clusters. And we created a custom color map here, which will just set the colors for each of our clusters. And for the legend, I use this function here, which automatically tries to detect a good legend for the plot. So if you run this here, we see a 3D plot of each of our clusters. And in fact, these points here do refer to cluster one and these two between cluster zero and cluster two. So one useful thing about hierarchical clustering is the dendrogram that it produces. So we'll now go on to plot this dendrogram. So for that, I've imported dendrogram and linkage, but this time from the scipy library. So first we need to define our linkage. And again, we're gonna be using the ward method. If I was to create a dendrogram on 150 observations, it may be quite difficult to read. So I decided just to take a random sample of 20 observations from our data and produce our dendrogram on those 20 observations, which is what this code here is for. We'll then set the figure size to be seven by five. So we'll then apply our dendrogram function, which we imported earlier. And this takes a few properties. First of all, the linkage, which we defined here, and also the orientation. So this orientation equals top basically means we're plotting the dendrogram with n clusters at the bottom and one cluster at the top. 
We'll then add some axes labels. So if you run this, we can see here the produced dendrogram for all of our 20 data points, and we can see the linkage between each of our clusters. So one thing to note here is that there's quite a large dissimilarity once two clusters have been formed, and this can be shown here on our plot and most likely refer to this cluster here and this cluster here. So there's quite a large distance between the two. So that's pretty much it for agglomerative hierarchical clustering in Python. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and learned something new. So I'll leave a link in the description to my GitHub where you guys can find this code. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for watching.